This is a special edition of Take a Break. We're less than an hour away from the congressional hearing on the retail investor fueled rally in GameStop that sent its shares soaring to a high of $483. But here's a quick reminder of all that went down during the frenzy. This is why we wake up in the morning. I mean, there's really no question about it. Everyone I've talked to says one of the most extraordinary weeks, most extraordinary stories ever, at least in financial media. But it's beyond that, really. Uh, it's a phenomenon. It was the spectacle no one could ignore. Nurtured by a roaring kitty and whipped into a frenzy on Reddit, Wall Street bets catching Wall Street veterans completely off guard. Now, U.S. lawmakers enter the fray. A congressional hearing and a chance to hear directly from the companies at the center of a storm that took the heavily shorted shares of GameStop and pushed them from less than $20 to almost $500 in less than a month. The fall back down to earth and the volatility in between sparking investigations into potential market manipulation. I understand that the administration is taking a look, the SEC is taking a look at what that is, but uh, we'll all be reviewing it, but, but interesting. And calls for more scrutiny of trading apps, social media, and broker liquidity. I like to think that under the new administration, there's more social utility, there's more enforcement, you know, kind of a counterweight to, I think, the extreme dishonesty that's really surged through the markets uh, the past several years. The debate around investing circles is just how to approach this new kind of phenomenon. Congress, Wall Street, and a new breed of retail traders who showed that they are now a force to be reckoned with. We're going to take you to the hearing just after it starts, but first we'll tell you everything you need to know about the day's events. Let's get going. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this special edition of Take a Break. We are just about 30 minutes away from the House Committee on Financial Services hearing on the GameStop frenzy that captivated Wall Street and many around the world. Here's a look at who's going to testify. Uh, among them are Robinhood CEO, CEO of Reddit, and CEO of Citadel. The virtual hearing is titled GameStop, Who Wins and Loses When Short Sellers, Social Media, and Retail Investors Collide. Bloomberg Chief Washington Correspondent Kevin Cirilli joins me now from Washington, D.C. Kevin, uh, great to see you this afternoon. You have seen so many of these hearings over the last few years in your reporting from the nation's capital. Um, what are lawmakers hoping to learn from testimonies today? Well, do you have the popcorn ready? Because it's yeah. going to be a fiery, fiery <laughs> hearing with House Financial Services Committee Chairwoman Maxine Waters taking the helm. I spoke with a staffer to uh, the chairwoman earlier this morning, and the staffer said to me that they are fully prepared to go after uh, all of these uh, industry leaders, particularly with Robinhood and GameStop, and the situation that has ar arised as a result of it. But it's not just in the House where the focus is really starting to, to come into gear. It's also in the Senate. Senator Elizabeth Warren, a Democrat from Massachusetts, of course, a, a, a top progressive uh, on the left, as she's written letters uh, to some of these industry leaders, uh, including one this morning where she's gone after the CEO of Citadel for their relationship. This is a hedge fund company of relationship and, and trying to inquire about their potential relationship uh, with GameStop, with Robinhood. Now, Citadel is saying that they are not uh, that they were not involved in this whatsoever. But uh, two specific policy areas to watch. Uh, first and foremost, do any of these folks who are testifying today, do they take the route of Silicon Valley, in which the big tech CEOs came to testify and largely shrugged off policymakers and regulators' requests uh, in terms of their industry? Or do they try to take a more proactive approach and an acceptance, really, that they are now in not just the hot seat, but for years to come, they will be the focus of regulators and policymakers? Do they try to take uh, a more creative approach and, and try to work with uh, policymakers Makers and to make sure that this is an equal and fair uh, marketplace. But then secondly, yes, the Democrats are going to go after these folks, but look at the Republicans. Will, some Republicans are, are going to go after uh, uh, the hedge fund companies. There's this intro wonk war in financial services between some banking industry leaders and hedge fund companies. Uh, 
but will some Republicans make the case that perhaps some of these emerging financial uh, services companies, that they actually have the ability to help underserved communities in rural America, in cities that typically don't have access to financial services in a way that uh, more high net wealth individuals do. I'm going to be watching that, especially on the Republican side. So, Kevin, you, you, you started out this by, by, by making reference to grabbing the popcorn because they're, they're, this is going to be something to watch. And, and, you know, as somebody who has covered so many of these hearings in the past few years, they do really seem to, to turn into, you know, for lack of a better term, like a dog and pony show where you do see lawmakers who have prepared questions that will get the attention on cable news later that evening, that, that will make the rounds on social media. But oftentimes we, we don't see a lot of actual changes to the system come as a result. What happens after this hearing? You know, Tim, you do this really well in terms of cutting through the noise. And I think the point that you're raising is, is a really important one about how do we cut through the noise to really focus on the policy. And uh, look, I, I will never forget covering the Facebook cryptocurrency hearing a, a, a more than a year ago and, and watching in real time as some of the members on both sides of the aisle, this is not a knock uh, on any party, uh, clearly didn't understand the policies. Um, and clearly, I don't know who's, I mean, didn't understand uh, the conversation that they were having and were playing to talking points and viral moments. But where the hearing matters is that it sends a message from a reputational headline risk perspective for these companies, but also it sends a message in terms of, we're watching you. And that's yeah. what Washington is saying to GameStop and to Robinhood. We're watching you. They do have subpoena power. They do have the ability to uh, 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 launch investigations and to craft the regulatory narrative of the scope of the questions that are being asked, and that often informs the debate that regulators are going to be watching. So I, I, I hear you on the sense that it's, that it's a lot of noise, but what does that noise actually mean? It means, hey, they've got to pay attention to this because they are the, the regulators are watching this and the, uh, and the policymakers are as well. Yeah, it's a, it's a really good point. Um, Kevin, uh, billionaire investor Leon Cooperman uh, shared his disappointment that, that this whole saga is, is one of the narratives that has emerged as, as pitting the haves versus the have-nots. Um, here's what he told Bloomberg TV earlier today. Take a look. There's a lot of things the SEC could be doing. And the last thing we need is Elizabeth Warren or Bernie Sanders or AOC getting involved in setting policy. The, you know, the, 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 the rules and the regulations exist. They're in place. Just follow them. Okay, he says the rules and regulations exist that are already in place, but I, I, I want to get at one thing that he said. He, he named three members of the Democratic Party, the most liberal members uh, of the party, Senator Elizabeth Warren, Senator Bernie Sanders, um, and Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Uh, is there a, a political angle to this in the sense of, of, of political parties here, of Democrats versus Republicans, or is there bipartisan support uh, for, the, for these hearings? Here's what I know. That soundbite that you just played is music to the ears of AOC, Senator Warren, and Senator Sanders. It emboldens them. It will allow them to say, the billion see this, the billionaires don't want uh, us to even be having this conversation. Uh, and it fuels the system that uh, we all report on every day. Well, there it is. Bloomberg Chief Washington Correspondent Kevin Cirilli. Kevin, thanks so much for your time joining us from the nation's capital. And now over to the markets where stocks are lower. GameStop, though, trading at roughly $47 a share. That brings it close to where it was before the frenzy began. So the big question, where does it go from here? Joining me now is Bloomberg News Markets reporter Katie Greifeld right here in the Quick Take studio. Hey, Katie, thanks so much for, for being here. What does this round trip mean for, for shares of GameStop? Well, like you said, it's back to about $47 a share, which is where it was really in the middle of February. That's when you saw activist investor Ryan Cohen. He's also the co-founder of Chewy.com. He joined the board, and that was what really kicked off the rally that initially caught the eyes of Reddit and Wall Street bets, and then 
it quickly departed from any sort of fundamental story. So, I mean, you've seen GameStop sort of do that round trip. It surged over 1,600% wow. in January, but now it's down over 90% from that peak. But it's not just GameStop. If you look across the board at some of the other stocks that were very popular in January, you have AMC, BlackBerry, Tootsie Roll. They've all pretty much done a round trip, and it's like it never even happened. So so that's, that's the big question. I mean, is, is the, the rocket ship ride over for uh, these these meme stocks or is this something that's going to keep happening well gamestop is interesting and i'm super excited to hear from keith gill a little bit later today he's known as roaring kitty yeah i was gonna say <laughs> I, I think more people know who roaring kitty is katie than, than keith gill right yeah yeah or his more explicit name which we won't yeah. say but <laughs> in his written testimony he was still saying i'm a fundamental believer in gamestop i'm still a bull but even though the hordes seem to have moved on from gamestop and amc you are still seeing crazy trading in penny stocks hmm. so like the name implies those are stocks whose are trading for less than a dollar per share. They don't trade on traditional exchanges. They trade over the counter and volume has exploded. It's actually on track to hit two trillion in February after hitting one trillion in December and January. And they tend to be popular with retail traders since they're obviously a lot cheaper than your Apples and your Amazons. So you have seen this migration from the hot stocks like GameStop into these penny shares, which are cheaper and have maybe more of a little of a potential to pop, given that they are trading so low. Yeah, they're trading so low. So, you know, something that costs five cents, if it, you know, increases by a couple cents, that's a huge increase uh, exactly. for the shareholder. Um, I want to talk about some of this SEC data that, that we're seeing that shows that close to $360 million worth of shares of GameStop failed to deliver. They were, they were caught in limbo. What does that mean? So that is a fascinating wrinkle. So what that basically means is either the buyer didn't end up having the cash to complete the purchase or that the seller didn't have enough shares to actually settle the trade. Mm. So this kind of lends credence to the theory that some of the hedge funds may have been engaging in what's called naked short selling, which is illegal, and that's when you are selling shares that aren't known to exist. But that's just one theory of what's going on here. There's plenty of things that can cause a fail to deliver, but this is definitely one to watch. Okay, we can't forget the narrative that really dominated the beginning of this, right? Which is the, the short squeeze going after those hedge funds that didn't believe in, in GameStop and, and really sticking it to them. That was the idea, at least, of a lot of the Redditors. Um, where do short squeezes go from here? Where do short sellers go from here? So there's plenty of evidence to suggest that we did see a short squeeze hmm. in Explain GameStop. Explain what that is. Yeah, so basically short selling is when you borrow shares of a company and then sell it. And the hope is that you're gonna be able to buy it back at a lower price. So if the stock actually does fall, you would theoretically uh, pocket that difference basically. But in short selling, your losses are theoretically unlimited because a stock price can theoretically rise by an infinite amount. And so what a short squeeze is, is when losses become so great that the trader who was shorting that stock is basically forced out of their position. And what closing that position does, it can tend to exacerbate a rally that's already happening. And we de did see this happen in GameStop. If you go back and look at the data, the short interest in GameStop was about 141% in mid-January. It's now about 43%, so clearly some traders were forced out of their positions, including Melvin Capital. That's a hedge mm. fund we'll be hearing from at 12. Yeah, and it, it also shows, given that that's where short interest is, that there are still quite a few people who believe that, that GameStop is overvalued right now. Absolutely. Just as Roaring Kitty believes it has more room to run, there's plenty of people on the other side of that trade. Bloomberg News Markets reporter Katie Greifeld. Katie, great to see you. Thanks so much for your time. We'll see you in just a few minutes. Well, coming up, how long will this go on? That's the big question. Is there an end in sight or is this kind of volatility, this activity from retail investors, from Redditors, is that the new normal? We'll be back in two minutes. This is Take a Break.
Access the financial world on demand. Hear from leading economists, policymakers, and industry experts via live and on-demand webinars only from Bloomberg. Start exploring to see what's moving the markets. Visit Bloomberg.com webinars. Welcome back to Take a Break. I'm Tim Stanovec in New York. Well, as lawmakers prepare to question the leaders of the companies at the center of the GameStop saga, many are wondering, does this hearing mark the end or is this all just getting started? Bloomberg Intelligence's head of market structure research, Larry Tabb, joins me now. Larry, thanks so much for, for being here. Um, what ultimately here, happens Tim. after today? You know, I, I, I'm not sure much happens. Hmm. Uh, um, uh, I think Certainly, you're going to have a lot of fireworks on the Hill. There's going to be a lot of pointed questions. There will be a lot of, of sound bites that get clipped out of this. Um, but actually, the, you know, the industry worked as it was supposed to. Um, you, you had a number of people buying game stock and other meme stocks at a, you know, multiples over what it's valued at. The clearing system basically forced that, the brokerage to put up more collateral to make sure that they could um, settle the trades. Uh, the, the brokerages stop folks from extending their positions. Things cleared basically, and we're kind of back to normal. So, so I, I'm not sure a ton actually happens here. Um, you know, one thing could be they could, you know, push back on payment for order flow. But there's a lot of actually good things that happen with payment for order flow because with that comes price right. improvement, and investors actually get a pretty good price when they execute. Um, there could be some movement towards, you know, shortening the settlement cycle, but that's going to be a long-term project and very expensive. And it'll be interesting to think, see if the industry has um, the desire to do that without being forced. So, so what about though, Larry, um, when it comes to to Robinhood and and the, and the capital requirements, but you know that that Robinhood actually could have or, or or could be required to have? Because one thing that emerged in the days following when Robinhood had to, to shut off trades was was the idea that they actually had to reach out for a lifeline of money, a, a line of credit, and, and raise money from investors uh, uh, to, to satisfy capital needs. You know, that's not a bad thing. Uh, you know, the, the challenge with clearing trades is uh, that the clearinghouse, DTCC, makes, needs to make sure that everybody can afford to pay for the securities that they've bought and can deliver the securities that they've sold. And if the value of these uh, securities is being traded way over what they're really worth, then that opens up questions as to whether the counterparties can settle the orders. Um, and so it pushes people to put up more collateral. I don't see that as being a challenge. Now, you know, it's GameStop undercapitalized, or not GameStop, Robinhood undercapitalized. Apparently, DTCC thought so. They borrowed more money for capital and um, and hence were able to clear their trades. Mm -hmm. um, the counterside to that is speeding up the, the settlement clock, uh, which is actually a good thing, but it, it will force basically virtually everyone from brokers to custodians to uh, in, you know, institutional investors to uh, basically everybody to... Um, enhance their systems and rewrite their core clearing infrastructure, which would be very, very expensive. And, and I think also risk prone because the, the challenges of it going wrong are actually pretty high. So, so I, that's going to be tough to do. Um, but I, I think, you know, by and large, you know, the big downside I possibly see is, is, you know, somebody coming up with some sort of transaction tax to get rid of the speculation. Mm -hmm. But I think that would be pushed back on by, Virtually everybody, as Cooperman said earlier, uh, hopefully that doesn't become too political. Uh, Larry, um, 
what's the next GameStop? You, you have a, a, a note out in Bloomberg Intelligence today, and one of the subheads is stock market gamification unlikely to end soon or, or draw new rules. What's the next GameStop? What's the next meme well, stock? Yeah, that's a good question. Certainly, as you as you also mentioned, there's a lot of interest in penny stocks. That that's gone crazy. Mm. You know, we're we, we're basically averaging 99 billion shares being traded a day. Now the average share price is four cents a share, uh, but still that's just insane amounts of volume. So clearly, you know, penny stocks are the next big thing. Um, also, you're seeing lots of options volume, and that's been you know picking up actually over the last couple of years. So we're seeing more interest in in options trading, um, and of course that's very you know those are levered uh, levered trades. Um, so people are looking for more juice. Well, there it is, Bloomberg's Larry Tab. Uh, Larry, thanks so much for your time and for joining us on this special. Uh, no problem. Thanks, Tim. Today. Well, coming up, this whole trading frenzy began on social media. So how are the memes and the trolls posting about today's testimony? Fortunately, Jennifer Zabasaja did some digging. We're going to be back in two minutes with what she found. This is Take a Break. Access the financial world on demand. Hear from leading economists, policymakers, and industry experts via live and on-demand webinars only from Bloomberg. Start exploring to see what's moving the markets. Visit Bloomberg.com webinars. Our generation's biggest problem. Climate change is happening. And the world's most innovative solutions transport, industry, uh, buildings, electricity, all of those things. Everything you need to know about our changing environment, the politics of global warming. We can and we will deal with climate change. In the fight against climate change, Bloomberg Green has you covered. Welcome back to Take a Break. I'm Tim Stanovec in New York. Well, many people on social media are gearing up for the GameStop hearing. So what's the chatter been like online? Bloomberg Quick Take reporter Jennifer Zabasaja is here to let us know. Hey, Jen. Hey, Tim. Yeah, we got a lot of chatter going on. And I mean, as Kevin Cirilli mentioned earlier, it looks like a lot of people are actually preparing to take out the popcorn and start <laughs> preparing to watch this. So first off, we have a tweet from one of the people who are actually testifying today, Vlad Tenev, who put out this really fascinating picture. Of course, as you can see here, it is from the iconic movie, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Vlad is not physically going to be in Washington. Yes, this is a virtual hearing. <laughs> this is a virtual hearing. But still, he's telling his followers that he is not going to be on Twitter for a little bit. But I'm sure that won't last too long. We is, is that considered a troll? I, I definitely think so. You think so? so? Okay. Yeah. Right. Trolling I mean, lawmakers? <laughs> trolling lawmakers. Okay. I mean, how long was his, his testimony? It was like 13 pages, right? It's, yeah. it's pretty long. Uh, so we he's going to be off Twitter for a little bit. Uh, we also have a pretty fun tweet from a sports reporter who put this out. Her name's Charlotte Wilder. She put she took a nod to uh, the match that happened earlier today with Serena Williams and Naomi Osaka. Uh, of course, when they were greeting each other at the end, just, you know, saying maybe they were talking about GameStop. Maybe not but a lot of people are. Uh, also, one from our very own Miss Elena. Uh, she is getting in on the fun 
tweeting out something about from Wall Street Bets. You can't really see it, but Wall Street Bets actually put out a post uh, suggesting that followers get in on a drinking okay. game. Okay, yeah, so let's go over some yeah. of these rules here, okay? So <laughs> I, you might have trouble seeing it on the screen, but I have it pulled up right here. Yes. Take a sip every time some boomer congressperson doesn't know how stock slash the internet slash Reddit work. How many, how many times do you think you'd have to drink for that one? Um, I, well, I think it's going to be more about Reddit. To be honest, I think a lot of these lawmakers know uh, about the financial markets. Yep. Um, okay, there's another one. Take a sip every time Vlad <laughs> avoids answering the question. I think that might happen a few times. I mean, seven, 13 pages for his testimony. We'll see how the questions back and forth go later. What okay. else is that? Okay, take a shot every time Vlad pleads the fifth. Okay. Okay, and then the rest of the next one I'm not going to read because there's a bad word on it. <laughs> um, finish your drink and or buy a share every time um, the Reddit thread DFV. Um, I'm not going to say it, <laughs> says I like the stock. So obviously there is going to be some conversation happening yes. online on Reddit, Wall yes. Street Bets, as this goes on. And they are betting that that's going to happen. And Wall Street Bets actually, Tim, even got in on the Twitter chatter, uh, tweeting out this meme, which I'm I'm still not over this video from last week about <laughs> with a Texas lawmaker uh, who put his Zoom uh, profile <laughs> as the kitty, suggesting that the person in the bottom corner is Roaring Kitty. Of course, as we know, that is not going to be it. But maybe we don't know because it's a virtual hearing. So <laughs> yeah, everybody saw this video, right? Yeah, it, it was it was amazing. Of course, Roaring Kitty is Keith Gale. So if you were to summarize the chatter that you saw online, I know you went through a lot of tweets here, yeah. what was trending. Um, what would you say it is? I mean, is it one of, of, of interest in, in what's actually happening or is it one of like saying, hey, this thing is all for show? Well, I think it's a combination of both, right? I mean, we have some people like, you know, we have lawmakers like Elizabeth Warren, who I know you were talking about earlier today, who is tweeting about uh, the serious nature of this. You know, she sent questions to, uh, to games, to Roy, uh, sorry, to um, Vlad Tenev and to a few of these other hedge funds just suggesting uh, that she still has some questions about what happened with this whole frenzy last month. But a lot of people, as we know, got in on the chatter. This was started on, on Twitter, on, on forums like uh, you know, with Wall Street bets. And so it was a lot of discussion happening at the time. And I think a lot of people are just sort of tuning in to see what's going to happen, what this could mean for them. Because, of course, as we know, this is not just affecting Wall Street. This is also affecting day traders. So we could see how that how that plays out. Yeah, it certainly is. Uh, Jen, we only have uh, about 30 seconds left here. Um, but in terms of what you're watching specifically, what are you looking to see from lawmakers when they ask questions to uh, these executives? I mean, maybe it's not just going to be all about the sound bites, Tim, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe they are truly going to get to the heart of the issue here. I know a lot of people are betting that that may not happen, but clearly there's a lot of interest in this from both sides, and so we're going to have to watch and see how it plays out. Bloomberg Quick Take reporter Jennifer Zabasaja, thanks for your time. Well, coming up, final thoughts on the hearing before we bring it to you live. We'll be back in two minutes. This is Take a Break. Access the financial world on demand. Hear from leading economists, policymakers, 
and industry experts. Be alive and on demand webinars only from Bloomberg. Start exploring to see what's moving the markets. Visit Bloomberg.com webinars. Welcome back to Take a Break. I'm Tim Stenovec in New York. Well, the U.S. House Financial Services Committee's virtual hearing on GameStop will begin shortly, and we're going to take you there very soon. Before we do that, though, let's get some final thoughts from Bloomberg Wall Street reporter Shanali Basik, Bloomberg Markets reporter Katie Greifeld, and Bloomberg Opinion tech columnist Tay Kim. Hey, thanks all of you for, for joining us. Katie, I want to start with you. Um, what are you watching for when this hearing gets underway in just a couple minutes? I'm really interested to see how they talk to Keith Gill. So this is Roaring Kitty. He's known by more explicit names on Reddit.com, but he's sort of become the poster child. So Keith Gill's involvement is, obviously he posts a lot on Reddit, but he also created YouTube videos where he would talk about his stock picks. He would have streaming videos where people could comment and and sort of share their own opinions. And again, he's sort of become the poster child here. And if you look at the list, you know, you have the likes of Ken Griffin from Citadel, you obviously have the Robin Hood CEO and Melvin Cap Capital, and then you have Keith Gill. And so I'm interested to see what kind of questions they ask him, since as he made clear in his written testimony, he wasn't trying to cause a short squeeze. As he said, he just likes the stock. And so mm. how they come down on him, how, what questions they ask him, I'm really excited to see. Hey, take him. Uh, come on in here. Uh, be, because a lot of testimony came out yesterday, just a little before 3 o'clock Eastern time. And I know you've had some time to, uh, to look through those. What did you learn from reading testimony from some of the folks who are going to be testifying today? Uh, I thought the Citadel one was really interesting that he's Ken Griffin is pushing for a T plus one in changing the, the settlement terms. Right now, uh, a trade gets executed, and then it takes two days to settle. And that was a big reason why Robinhood had a lot of problems, because they had to put up extra collateral. And Ken Griffin is suggesting that let's change that to one day. And Robinhood actually also said they they were like real time. So this is actually concrete um, changes to be made to make sure this never happens again. Uh, Shanali, come on in. What, what are you looking for? I mean, this is getting started in just a minute. Yeah, absolutely. This is something where, of course, yes, that T plus one settlement thing is an idea. Then also the payment for order flow with Citadel and Robinhood, that relationship. Honestly, there's a fundamental question here about whether they will use this as an opportunity to really uh, amp up Main Street frustration with Wall Street. Let's not forget that's how all of this began.